So let's continue to our playlist. But for that, hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we are going to solve today is finding out the middle of a given linked list. So what is the problem state? You will be given a linked list, and you have to return me the node which is the middle of that given linked list. So for this linked list, we have five nodes, right? So I can say that this particular node is the middle node. Why? Because on the left we have two elements. On the right we have two elements. Correct? So you'll have to return me this entire node. not the value the entire node so this is what the question is asking you now you might be thinking n equal to 5 was odd so getting a middle was super simple what if it has even number of nodes so let's take the second example over here we have six nodes and it is even in this case i cannot say that this is the middle because on the left we have two elements on the right we have three elements it is not exactly the middle i also cannot say that this is the middle because on the left we have 3 on the right we have 2 so the middle is somewhere between it so i can say this is middle m1 this is middle m2 somewhere between will be the exact middle so in such cases whenever there are even number of nodes you'll be returning the second middle yes you'll be returning the node 4 so this problem comes up in an interview i'll be starting off with the extreme naive solution and the extreme naive solution that i can think of is i need the third node over here I need the fourth node over here, and in this case, the number of nodes are five. In this case, the number of nodes are six. I need to find a relation between n and the middle node, n and the middle node. Can I say if I know the number of nodes, if I know the number of nodes, the middle node will be n by two plus one. Can I say that? Why? Because if I take n equal to five by two plus one, five by two integer division is two. So two plus one is third node, which is what we are looking for. Let's look for six. Six by two plus one. Six by two is three. Integer division plus one. So you are looking for fourth node, which is again correct. So can I say this? If I have the value of n, because what we are given is the head of the linked list. If somehow I can find out the value of n, then I just need the n by two integer division. Plus one th node, and that node will always be my middle node. Can I surely say this? I surely can. So how can I find n? Because we are not given n. We'll do the traversal technique because we we already have done a problem to find the length of the linked list. We'll do the same. I'll keep it temporary at the head because we don't want to alter the head. And after that, we'll keep a count equal to zero. And let's check if temporary is null. Initially, it is not. So count will increase. And temporary will move. Is temp null? No. So count will again increase. Again, I'll move temp. Is temporary null? No. So count will again increase. Let's move. Is temporary null? No. So count will again increase. Is temporary null? No. Count will again increase. Is temporary null? Yes. The moment temporary is null, you stop, and the value of count is five. Can I say that this is the n that we were looking for? Yes, this is the n. So once you have n, you need the middle node. So can I say the middle node will be five by two plus one, which is three? So let's look for the middle node. Can I look for it? Yes, very simple. You have the middle node's value as three. So let's start with temp. Again, let's place the temp at head because that is the starting point. That is where we start off. Let's start. I'm at temp. What I'll do is I'll have the mid node as three. Okay. So I can reduce it. Let's reduce three by one, and then we will move. Perfect. Again, we are at a node. Let's reduce it again, and let's move. Let's reduce it again. The moment you reduce, the moment you reach here, the moment you reach here, and you reduce, what you see is temporary is pointing to the middle node, and the value is zero. What does that mean? You have encountered three nodes. You have encountered three nodes. That is why the middle node, which was three, has see on three encounters, it will reduce itself, and the ultimate value will be zero. So what I can say is, wherever temp stops, that will be my middle node. What if I need to write the code? It'll be super simple, isn't it? Two steps. First temporary will be head. I need the value of count, so let's say count zero, and I'll keep on going till temporary is not null because I need to count. So let's do counter plus plus. What is the next thing that we will do? 
we will simply say hey temporary can you go to temporary dot next he will say why not so what this will do is this will count you the number of nodes correct once you have the number of nodes can i say that the step one is done step one is done what is the next thing to get the middle node so can i say the middle node will be integer division of count plus one i can integer division of count by two plus one once this is done let's again place temp at head that is something which i'll do right after that i will be moving to i'll moving the temp right until how much can i say that we can probably move it till we don't reach null and we'll stop this is the first node right this is the first node temp so let's reduce mid equal to mid node minus 1 and this is the node what if this is my middle node so i'll check hey if after reduction did you turn 0 if you did that means you are the node that means you are the node maybe you can break that will be better let's break and in case you did not turn 0 let's go to the next so what i'll do is i'll say temporary equal to temporary dot next once this is done over here you can return the temp whatever is your temp because after the break it will be coming over here and it will be returning your temp so can i say this will be step two what will be the time complexity i can surely say that the step one will be taking big o of n where n is the number of nodes and the step two will be taking big o of n by two because we'll be going halfway through the linked list so the overall time complexity will be big o of n plus n by two and the space complexity will be big o of one this is where the interviewer will ask you to optimize this because what you're doing is you're doing a two pass solution you're going once then you're going again to find it out can you do it in one pass this is what the interviewer will ask you in the next step so the optimal approach will be using an algorithm known as tortoise and hair algorithm so this algorithm involves the concept of slow and fast pointers i'll be explaining you i'll be explaining you the intuition as well so what we do is we take a slow pointer at the same time we take a fast pointer and the and both of them are pointing to the head of the linked list you will not alter the head yes you will not alter the head and what you will do is you'll move the slow pointer by one step you'll move the fast pointer by two step and you'll do that simultaneously you'll do that together so let's do it so what you do is you move both of them together so slow moves here and the fast pointer will move here that is the step number one in the next step you will again move slow and fast together so slow moves here and the fast will move two steps two steps so the fast reaches here remember this the moment the fast pointer reaches the last node the moment the fast pointer reaches the last node that is when you will stop that is when you will stop and you can see that the slow pointer is pointing to the middle node why i'll explain you don't worry so that was for the link list with the odd length let's look at the link list with the even length as well so over here again we'll do the same thing slow and the fast pointer let's try it out simultaneously together slow fast one step two step perfect step number one next step slow fast together slow one step fast two step perfect carefully observe fast pointer is not at the last is not at the last if it is not at the last you keep moving it let's do the next step one step and two step one step and two step so one step and two step so over here you can see that the fast pointer has reached a position where it is standing at null so if it is standing at null you will stop and the moment you stop you will see that the slow pointer is pointing to your middle node so what did you observe in case where the link list length is odd the fast pointer will be reaching your last node in case of even length link list the fast pointer will be reaching your null because it will never reach the last it will never reach the last 
So if you carefully observe, the first pointer is at null. It will never reach the last node. It will never reach the last node. Why? Because it starts at an odd index, odd number one. If it is jumping two steps, it will go to the next odd number. It is again jumping two steps, it will go to the next odd number. But if the length is even, the last number is a even. So it cannot go to a even. It cannot go to a even. So one thing I know is in odd, it will go to the last. In even, it will go to the null. That is what I know for sure. What is the intuition? The intuition is very simple. Uh, isn't it simple? Like if there are two people P1 and P2 and the P1 is traveling with a speed X and the P2 is traveling with a speed X by 2. If this person covers a distance D, what will be the distance that P2 will cover? It will cover a distance D by 2. Isn't that obvious? That is the logic over here. You're moving one pointer by one step. You're moving the other pointer by two steps. So when the fast pointer reaches the end, I'm sure that the previous pointer will be standing somewhere in the middle, will be standing somewhere in the middle. And this is how it is solved. So what I'll do is I'll now quickly write down the code. It's going to be super simple. Slow is maybe I'll use some other color. Slow is pointing to the head. The fast pointer is also pointing to the head. And what is your first thing? You need to take into account two conditions. One is it might reach the end because you do not know whether it is an odd length linked list or whether it is an even length linked list. You don't have any idea. So maybe it will reach the last or maybe it will reach the null. So if it is reaching the last, can I say the next is always null? So I know one thing. Maybe the fast pointer will reach the last which is null. So it shouldn't be the last. It shouldn't be null. It shouldn't be null. And, and the next of it should also not be null. Why is this condition written? Because if my fast is standing here and the next is null, in that case, I stop. So if it is not, if it is not, if it is not, the null or the last, then I go ahead and do the steps together. So what I'll do is I'll say slow. Can you move to slow next? They'll be like, why not? I will. And the next fast. Can you move to fast next? Once both of them are done, you can straight away return the slow and that will be your answer. What will be the time complexity? Very obvious. B go of n by 2, we're doing it in one pass and in just n by 2 time. What is the space complexity? B go of 1 because we are not using any external space. So let's quickly get back into the code editor and check out the code. So over here, you're given a function and you're given the head of the linked list. And what they're expecting you is to return a node, not the value. So you basically write the slow and fast pointing to head and you write the while loop and after that, you simultaneously move them together and then return the slow. So if you go ahead and submit this, it will be running absolutely fine. So this was about the C++ code. In case you want for Java, you can copy paste the same code. Go back to Java, paste it over here. And if you have been following my playlist, you know what to do. Remove the pointers. What is the next step? The null gets converted to smaller, small caps. After that, what is the next step? This gets converted to dots. Anything else should be good. Let's quickly submit it straight away and see if it is running fine. So C++ and Java codes are pretty much similar. You just need to do minor changes and it will start working. So if you're watching till now, I hope you have understood everything. And in that case, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken.